One thing I wanted to do when I started this channel was do it from the very beginning so you learn with me as I grow as a photographer. I wanted to do that together, you know, learn together, upgrading equipment together, learning how to photo edit together. And you know, on this journey, I'm going to be visiting plenty of new locations and I want to share my experiences along the way. And one of those places is Snowdon in Wales. And again, just like the photography, the locations that I'm going to be going to, they're going to be new. I'm going to be a beginner when it comes to hiking and things. So I want to share my thoughts and my experiences with you and answer some of those questions that maybe you've got before you visit Snowdon. And in today's video, that is no different. And as you can imagine on the lead up to going to Snowdon, I had plenty of questions. And one of those questions, believe it or not, was can you take your dog up Snowdon? Now, what I will say is I didn't end up taking my dog, but that was maybe because I was a bit worried. But what I'm going to try and do today is I'm going to try and answer the questions that you may have if you want to take your pup up there, talk about the best routes, talk about how to be prepared, and basically just give general advice on it. And if you do like today's video and you want to join me on this journey of photography and travel, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Anyway, let's get straight into today's video. Now, believe it or not, it's a very common question um, about people asking if they can take their dogs up Snowden. And when doing a bit of research, there wasn't really much information that I'd come across and I really had to search for. Hopefully this video will give you peace of mind, answer any questions that you have. And in short, the answer is yes very much so as i say i didn't end up taking my dog up snowden i've got a springer spaniel and he's very fit and i still was a little bit worried you know on certain aspects of it things like what's the best route can they damage their feet you know is it good for their joints etc etc and as i say i'm going to try my best to answer all that in the video but in short the answer is yes anyway firstly i wanted to talk about the routes the best routes to take up there especially if you're taking a dog for the first time anyway and you know i went to snowden just as the spring hit so it was still wet it was still cold and there was still plenty of dogs up and down the mountain so anyway so i took up the pig track route and came down the miners route which both have a decent amount of scrambling involved for those who don't know what scrambling is it is when obviously you've got a climb up rocks using your hands you know each step could be a foot two foot on slippery or even loose rock formations and yet you know I did see plenty of dogs especially on the pig track no think I've really seen many on the miners track because that is a lot more steep coming down although the majority of that route has a very flat route for the majority but obviously when it comes to the scrambling is a lot more steeper than the pig track but I suppose you've just got to look at it from the same aspect as you would yourself would you prefer to go on a flat track would you prefer scrambling do you think your dog could do it if it's hard for you it's going to be hard for the dog if it's an easy path for you it's going to be easier for the dog so after a lot of research, and as I say, the dogs that I seen on the pig track, obviously with a lot more scrambling involved and very steep rock formations that they did kind of have to jump up, they did look super fit. There was very small dogs, there was big dogs, but everything they had in common, you could tell they had done it before. So maybe stay clear of those, especially if it's your first time as well. And one track that a lot of people have recommended is the Land Beris Path which is the only path up Snowden with no scrambling at all. But just like the others, you know, it is all uphill, it is all demanding. But if you're worried about your pet, I'd probably suggest the Lamberis path is best for you in the pooch. Another one is the Snowden Ranger path, as that is the quietest and also the easiest for dogs. So the both of them seem to be quite popular. Now the Lamberis path especially may be a longer distance, but obviously it'll be a lot less tiring on their legs because you might have the fittest dog in the world, but if he's never done anything like this before, it could have, you know, a long effect on their joints. So one of the reasons I was a little bit apprehensive about taking uh, my Springer Spaniel up was the simple fact, you know, they do suffer from joint pain and things like that. Touch wood, a mine's not really experienced anything like that. But, you know, if you're wanting him to walk, you know, for three, four hours plus for the first time, then you want to make it as easy as possible. One thing I will say is be mindful that all dogs must be kept on a lead at all times up and down Snowden. I did notice a few not following that rule, but at the same time, you know, it's their first time and it's your first time. You'll be wanting to keep them on the lead to make sure they stay quite close to you anyway. So that kind of goes without saying. Now, another concern I had is what would happen if the dog got injured. Now, the things you've got to think about is would you be able to carry the dog the rest of the way up or down? Would your fitness allow you to be able to do this? Because 
situation of it is a big massive risk it's just like taking your child up if you know if your child was to hurt themselves you'd ultimately have to carry them down and you know touch wood as long as it wasn't a severe injury you wouldn't have to call the air ambulance for your dog you don't want to be doing that so you've just got to make sure you're prepared before you go you know your dog's got a good level of fitness you've got a good level of fitness in case of that happens you know some dogs that suffer from very sensitive feet so you may want to even look into dog booties now i know this may not be your first thought to see your little dog wearing four little shoes but at the same time if you want to protect their feet they're going to be a great option for you especially if you're taking one of the more challenging routes you will want to protect their paws as best as you can so this may be an option for you but there is another option you do have if you do reach the summit and maybe your dog is looking a bit worse for wear. Dogs are allowed on the train and the runs to the summit of Snowden. I think it's one pound a dog. So if that was the case, plan your route adjacent with the train arrivals at the summit because that could be a great option for you. You may want to pre-book that or at least speak to the train ticket office to get more information if you'd need to pre-book because you don't want to be finding out the train is fully booked when you do get up there. That is just another option that I thought to make over. On the travel side of things, obviously, depending where you park and where you start, you may have to get a shuttle bus of some sort. Dogs are allowed on the shuttle buses as well. So if you can't get in the Penny Pass car park, for instance, and you need to park in one of the car parks located five or ten minutes away, you will be able to take your dog on them as well. Now I want to talk about food and snacks for your pup as they're very important for you so they're going to be just as important for your four-legged friend. So firstly, water. You obviously want to take plenty of water for yourself and you know, you may get away with it. You may not have to take any water for the dog as there are plenty of fresh water streams on the way up Snowden for the dogs to find refreshments, have a little paddle. But you know, you may want to take a spare water bowl and add a little bit more water than you usually would onto your trip just in case you do need to rehydrate your little pup now as for the food i came across an article that gave me five favorite hiking snacks for dogs firstly peanut butter good old-fashioned peanut butter is at the top of the list as it is high in protein and of course dogs absolutely love this secondly bananas if your pup eats bananas this is great for them as well and you know bananas and peanut butter are probably up there for humans as well you know they're probably two of the best options to replenish your energy and you know anything else dry kibble training treats things like that anything that will just give them a little boost in energy um, i'm pretty sure if you do a little bit of a google you can find a dog range of food called on the go i think it's by lily's kitchen or something like that i will leave a link in the description if you want to check them out and they specialize in dog treats for obviously things like hiking so another great one especially if you feed your dog raw food is you may want to look into dog food rolls now if you give that a little google dog food rolls are basically complete meals that are easy for travel you'll find plenty of places that will sell these dog biscuits dog bars you know anything you can think jerky treats there's another one anything you can think will just obviously give your dog a little pick me up in protein i'm sure will do the job and you know finally i just want to mention a few things that are basically common sense but nevertheless still very important is plan ahead in every aspect make sure you plan for a longer walk again just like you would with children you know make plenty of stops plenty of refreshment breaks but most of all have plenty of fun in doing so you know don't just see it as a hike about getting it over and done with taking the scenery take the time there's no reason to set record times getting up and down and you know you'll enjoy it more and so will your four-legged friend anyway if there are any more questions that you have about taking your dog up snowden that maybe i didn't cover in this video please let me know down in the comments below i will answer every question as best i can and if i don't know the answer i'll do some research collect some information from a lot of sources and give you my final thoughts on that as i said earlier if you are new to the channel and you do want to follow me along this photography and travel journey hit the like button for me and subscribe to the channel and yeah that's the video